in 1962, they outdid themselves. The SR-71 Blackbird, a high-speed, high-altitude spy plane, is revered by many as one of the greatest jet planes ever built. The ethereal Blackbird could fly higher and faster than any jet aircraft in production and that still holds today. I knew that this airplane was going to be the fastest in the world. What I didn't know was it re would remain the fastest for 40 years. That's astonishing. But I remember back in the 60s, Kelly used to say, and he'd say it kind of aggressively, like I challenge anyone to adversely comment on this. He says, nobody's gonna produce an airplane with greater performance than this one by the year 2000. And back then I used to think, well, I hope I hang around long enough for the year 2000 to see if that turns out to be accurate because before this came along, every two or three years, somebody somewhere would produce one faster. As with the U-2, the initial client was the CIA, not the Air Force. The first version was called the A-12 and made its first flight in spring of 1962. To be able to withstand the heat generated by sustained speeds above Mach 3, the A-12 had to be designed from scratch with new technology and new materials. We would say this is roughly an 800 degree Fahrenheit airplane. Some things are hotter, but we have some cooler. I understand the self-cleaning oven is around uh, 425 and a soldering iron around 550. So that gives you an idea of what kind of heat we're talking here. The airframe was made from titanium and titanium alloys, and the structure was coated with a special radar-absorbing black paint that helped dissipate the heat. Because the aircraft surface was designed to expand from the heat during flight, the plane would leak fuel while sitting on the ground. The expansion would cause the entire aircraft to grow a couple of inches in length. This is the ejection sequence initiator and you're flying along and the canopy is closed and, uh, and you want to get out, so you pull this thing up. The first thing that happens is this canopy goes and then up you go and as you come out you turn like this and then you're dynamic this way and you have to deploy a stability chute, a small chute just for stability and the G's may knock you out but it won't be uh, death concern on that and as you're coming down you may still be unconscious and and then when you hit 15,000 feet, it cuts away that baby drogue chute for stability and deploys a large 35-foot chute. The aircraft was about 100 feet long and could carry 20 tons of special JP-7 jet fuel in the fuselage and wing tanks, enough to fly for about two hours. During this time, the high-flying spy plane could survey about 200,000 square miles of the Earth's surface. The CIA's highly classified single-seat A-12 version first flew in 1962, and the Air Force's twin-seat SR-71 version first flew in 1964. The two planes were nearly identical, and both could fly faster than Mach 3 at heights above 85,000 feet. The CIA continued to fly the A-12 until 1968, when the Air Force Blackbirds, based at Edwards Air Force Base, took over their reconnaissance duties. It wasn't only the fastest and highest flying airplane of its day, it also pioneered what today is called stealth, the ability to evade detection by radar. That airplane has these very you know, blended shapes and sharp chines and it's got the tails folded in and so on. And uh, they you know, f did a, not much by calculation, but a large amount by intuition and by taking it out to a radar range, sort of the equivalent of a wind tunnel for radar with models and trying different shapes and so on. And basically by the time you saw the thing on radar going at Mach 3, it was gone. But now the Blackbird really is gone. The military mothballed the SR-71 fleet in 1990, claiming satellites could do the job better. Two of the Blackbirds were temporarily reactivated in 1995. Before there ever was an SR-71 Blackbird, another, even more futuristic looking aircraft was being tested at Muroc. And this one was so far ahead of its time, it would have to wait decades before aviation technology caught up with it. In 1974, an SR-71 Blackbird flew from New York to London in a record one hour, 54 minutes, and 56 seconds. 
Extreme Aircraft will return on Modern Marvels.